This story takes place in the 90s. I was in college at the time. My friends and I caught wind of a fun party up north in the country. I was the only one with a car at the time, thus it was up to me if we went. Mind you, this was before smartphones, therefore we had to use MapQuest to print out the directions to this party. If you're not familiar with MapQuest, consider yourself lucky, but I digress. The party was about an hour and a half away. I told my friends, as long as they paid for my snacks and my gas, that I'd take them. They all pitch in a couple of bucks and I decide that I would drive them. We take off on Friday, around 5.30. My friend is guiding me with the MapQuest directions that we'd printed off. There were a couple of times where I missed a turn and we had to go back in order to follow the directions correctly. Since the MapQuest directions were printed off, they would not automatically correct themselves. You would have to go to your last point where you were not lost and guide yourself from there. Thankfully, my friend isn't a complete idiot. We did get lost a few times, but it wasn't anything we couldn't re-guide ourselves back to. The hour and a half drive ended up being more like two. The party was literally in the middle of nowhere, but I could definitely see why you would want to pick this place to party. There would be no way anyone would call the cops out here. The location of this party was this large open field. In the middle of this field was this huge bonfire. Around the bonfire were a couple of old couches that people were sitting on, but surrounding the open field in which the party was taking place were very dense woods. This was a bit unsettling. I pull into the open field and my friends and I get out. The party had about 50 people or so. The bonfire was quite large and the music was very loud, but thankfully, like I said earlier, we're out in the middle of nowhere. My friends and I are all having a great time, but during the party, however, I can't help but get this weird feeling coming from the woods around us. I feel like at any moment, someone or something is going to emerge, but obviously, nothing happens. I just figure to myself that I get paranoid when I drink. Another hour or so passes when the whole party hears this loud sound coming from the woods. It was loud enough to the point where we actually turned down the music to see if we could hear it better. And unfortunately, we did. The sound coming from the woods sounded like a very large wolf of some kind, but wolves typically try to avoid humans for the most part. We figure that the music and the fire should be able to keep the wolves at bay, so we stupidly continue partying. Mind you, my plan is to get drunk and stay overnight. I already had a couple of beers and I'm in no state to really drive. I could barely navigate my way on these back roads while I was sober. There was no way I could do it while drunk. The party continued, although it was not the same. The energy was off. Whatever that creature was, it made sure to make its presence known. Knowing this large creature was only a few yards away was at the back of everyone's mind. About 30 minutes later, we heard the howl, but this time, it was much, much closer. It's very clear that whatever this creature was, it was not afraid of us. Some drunk idiot stupidly decided to go into the woods with a flashlight. The person was clearly drunk and wanted to show off. We were able to follow where this person was due to them having a flashlight, giving away their position. It got to the point to where the flashlight was no longer visible through the trees. Around the same time, we heard a loud scream coming from deep inside the woods. At this very moment, all chaos broke loose. Some people ran to the woods while me and my friends went and stayed inside my car. My friends and I kept our eyes on the people that were entering the woods. These people also had flashlights, therefore we were able to keep somewhat track of them. Due to the situation, my friends and I started to sober up. About two minutes later, we hear a bunch of people screaming and a bunch of flashlights coming our way. The people exiting the woods were telling us to drive and to get out of there quickly. But again, I was in no state to drive. My friends and I stayed parked inside the car while everyone else seemed to drive away. Whatever it was in the woods seemed to scare everyone off. We were now alone inside this large open field with something in the woods. My friends and I decide that 
There's no way that we're able to stay the whole night out here alone. So we decide to slowly make our way back. This was a very dumb idea, but it beat staying out in the middle of that field. We slowly crept out of there, not driving any faster than 15 miles an hour. We wanted to make sure that we were safe. The likelihood of us seeing anyone on these roads were pretty slim, but we didn't want to take any chances. As we were slowly driving, something darted across the front of my car. It was definitely big, and it was fast. This spooked me for whatever reason, and I pressed on the accelerator. As I'm driving quickly, a deer jumps in front of my car, causing me to swerve. I drive off into a ditch, and I black out. I wake up around 2 in the morning. My friends and I are all thrown about inside of my car, but for the most part, okay. The deer that jumped in front of us, however, was not so lucky. The deer was laying about 30 feet ahead of us, in between the road and the ditch. There was something very large hovering over it. The best way that I can describe it is a mix between a wolf and a man. The features were wolf-like, but the actions were much like a human, eating with its hands. For whatever reason, I then get a jolt of adrenaline. My mind is able to clear up and I realize that I need to get out of there. Around this same time, my friends inside the car are starting to come too, and they also see the creature. I try to turn the car on while my friends are screaming inside. Between the screaming and my car trying to start, we unintentionally draw the attention of the creature. The wolfman creature then looks at us and stands up. My car finally sputters to life, and I try my best to get us back on the road. After what felt like an hour, which was more like 30 seconds, I was finally able to get us up and out of that ditch and back onto the road. The creature the whole time just watched us. I don't know how we were able to do it, but we somehow made it back. My car didn't seem to be damaged, minus the bumper, and thankfully, I didn't get pulled over. My friends and I spend the rest of the weekend trying to figure out what it is exactly that we saw on that old road. We also found out through a school friend that they found human remains not too far from where that party was. We aren't exactly sure if it's related to that evening or if it was something else, but something tells me that it's related to that thing that we saw out in the middle of the road. What creature did we see that night, and how close were we to being the next victim? In 1969, I was nine years old and I lived about a half mile down the road from an old church and cemetery. There were two other old homes there, but no one lived in them. There were strange things that happened quite often around where I lived back then. I remember one of the strange things that happened very well. My dad worked evenings from 3 p.m. till 11 p.m., just three miles down the road from our house. My mom and sister and I had just gone to bed when we started to hear a bumping sound on the back of the house. My sister and I ran from the bedroom we shared, in the back of the house, to the front of the house where my mother and father's bedroom was. My sister and I were scared, so my mother let us sleep with her until our father came home around 11pm that night. Their bedroom had two windows, side by side, on the front of the house, above the porch. You could see through the curtains at night due to the streetlight out front. We were lying there after not hearing any more noises when all of a sudden we had heard something on the front porch. Mom saw it first and sat up in bed. That made my sister and I notice her staring out the window. When we turned our gaze from our mom to the front window, we saw what looked like a very large dog on our front porch. It was walking to the front door upright on its back legs. When the creature reached the front door, it shook it violently. It was as tall as the door, and we could see it scratching at the screen door with its front paws. It remained there for what seemed like 15 minutes, but in reality, it was more like one or two. My mother didn't say a word. She just shushed us until it turned and walked about 10 feet to the steps on its back legs. Just before it reached the steps, it went back down on all four legs. My mother told us to go back to sleep, and we eventually did. I do not remember her telling my dad, but I do remember this well. 
It was six to six and a half feet tall, while standing upright on its hind legs. You could see its facial features, its ears, its snout, its head. Those features made it resemble a German Shepherd. I'm not entirely sure what I saw that night, but this I am sure of, is that I do not want to see that creature face to face. In October of 1972, my husband, our two babies, my brother, and I left Leavenworth, Kansas in our 1968 VW van on a camping trip to a recreational area in Arkansas called Beaver Lake. When we finally got there, we found a fairly remote campsite at the far end of the park. We wanted to be alone as the babies woke often during the night and needed to be fed. We didn't want to disturb any other campers. Shortly after pulling into our campsite, my brother pitched his tent next to the van. The rest of us were going to sleep in the van. Because of the many trees and thick brush, daylight had trouble poking into our camping spot. Fast forward to that night. Sometime around 3.30 a.m. I heard some animal sounds on the ridge that I thought were being made by coyotes. The babies were asleep and all was quiet otherwise. I peered out of the window but couldn't see what was making the sounds because it was so dark. Still hearing odd yips and howls, I laid back down on the back seat. Moments later, there was a huge crashing bang on the van wall right next to my head. My husband leapt up out of a full sleep. My brother bolted out of his tent and jumped into the van with us. We were all in a panic, looking in every direction, trying to see what had hit the van like that. My brother finally yelled that he saw something moving behind the van. We all turned just in time to see a large shadow moving about 20 feet behind the van, from left to right. After about 20 minutes had passed without any of us seeing movement out there, my husband and brother went out to inspect the van for damage. We then started hearing pounding steps coming from the brush about 50 feet behind us. The guys eased back into the front seat of the van. That's when my husband turned on the headlights and stepped on the brake pedal for rear lights. Instantly, there was a huge commotion. He started the engine and that's when, in the glow of the headlights, we could see a hairy thing 10 feet away and coming towards the van. As it got closer, its silver-tipped hairs glistened in the light. It had a grayish streak from its shoulders down to its back. The creature was walking on two legs and was around 7 or 8 feet tall, had a barrel chest, and had skinny legs. It never gave us a good view of its eyes though so I couldn't tell you what they looked like. I could see the face of it, and it was not like an ape. It was dog-like. It had ears and tufts of fur on top of them and was very human-like in its movements and general body structure. It moved smoothly and quickly around to the back of the van where it followed the base of the ridge away from us. That's when it let out a menacing huff and a low, rumbling growl like a dog. Insanely, my husband and brother bolted from the van, trying to get a better look. That's when a shower of gravel came at my husband. My husband and brother tore back into the van and burned up the road getting us out of there. I kept looking out of the back window and they looked in the rearview mirrors, but none of us saw that creature ever again. I am a 24-year-old male and I live in the middle of nowhere. I was getting home late one day after dropping my sister off at the airport in Lamar, Colorado. I live just under 7 miles north of the Oklahoma border on 250 acres of land. I have a trap line running around my property for coyotes. The first two traps I checked were empty so I headed south. That's when I saw this thing. At first I thought it was a coyote, a big coyote. It was almost 5 feet tall on all fours. It was caught in my trap and was running around making a dust cloud, and then it stopped and looked at me. Now I'm used to a Duke number 3 holding leg trap, so I could catch a variety of things in it. Anyways, I slammed on the brakes and my truck stalled because it was a manual. I was fumbling for the keys to start it. It's an old farm truck with the carburetor on it and it had quite an afterfire. Once the creature heard that, it lunged at me and roared. I saw that it had its hand, not a paw, but hand, caught in my trap, right hand to be exact. It had probably been looking for a dead rabbit I had in the bait hole next to the trap. It then stood up and ripped the two earth anchors I had, 24 inches on the ground, right out. 
It took me a long time to put those things in there with a 10 pound hammer, but it pulled them straight out within 15 seconds. After it did that, it just stood there, looking at me. It felt like an eternity and I knew that my 357 would not do anything to stop this thing if it came at me. I prayed to God that it wouldn't come for me in my truck. I was looking at it in shock and awe and I noticed that it had orange eyes. They weren't glowing, instead they had quite a tint, kind of like cat's eyes in the dark. They may have been reflecting my headlights, but I wasn't sure. It then took a step towards me and curled its upper lip, showing me its teeth. The teeth were huge. The two longest ones appeared to be four to five inches long. It then growled at me, and in the blink of an eye, the creature was gone. I was scared crapless. I jammed the truck into gear and spun the tires out, trying to get out of there. Like I said earlier, it felt like an eternity, but it had lasted no more than 30 seconds. I returned later with my Native American friend. He is a part of Arapaho. I grew up with him and I trust him. He told me some stories that were passed down through his grandparents' tribe and mentioned something about a loup garou, or a French werewolf. He also told me about how fur trappers in the late 1700s were chased off the land in the Rockies from this thing. Having seen this creature, I do not blame the trappers for leaving. My encounter happened in February of 2009. In November of 2008, I broke my arm and was basically stranded at home. I was unable to drive or work and was going stark raving mad with boredom. My best friend would drive the 35 miles north of Palmetto to pick me up in Fayetteville just to take me back to Palmetto for a visit at her home. She'd take me to dinner or out to see a movie only to deliver me back home. One night, she was driving me home. It was very late, well after 11 p.m. We were on the US 31 northbound, around the Rothbury area of Oceana County, on the expressway. Being in February in Michigan, the roads were naturally very snowy, with scattered patches of ice and bare pavement. There was a small pickup truck in front of us. It was about five car lengths away. All of the sudden, we saw something on two legs dart out from the left, just in front of an overpass. It ran across the two-lane highway and hit the back of the small pickup truck in the rear quarter panel, causing the pickup to fishtail. Luckily, the driver of the small pickup regained control, but didn't stop completely to see what collided with them. If anything, the pickup truck began to pick up speed, as if the driver had seen what had happened. My friend and I watched in utter astonishment as the creature finished running to the right and disappeared into the weeds and trees along the highway. It didn't even break stride after it hit the truck. We looked at one another and sat in silence for a moment, and then I said, Did you see that? She said, Yeah, I saw it. We finished the ride to my house in silence, both of us lost in our thoughts. It looked as if it was a giant dog or wolf. The creature was on its hind legs, not at all on its forelegs like a normal dog. It was at least seven feet tall and had pointed ears and kind of a mane around its neck, much like a lion's. The mane was a dark color and its hind legs looked like a dog's legs, which was even more pronounced as it was running on only its hind legs. The creature's front legs were swinging freely as it ran and it seemed to have its mouth open, as if it had something in it. It had an elongated face, much like a collie's face, and a long nose protruding from its face. Its face was covered in this longish hair. The entire creature seemed to be covered in this long hair, but I cannot recall if it had a tail. Something tells me it did not, but I'm not really sure. We thought, perhaps, it may have been one of the Michigan dogmen that had been said to be in our area. Being a former Native American area, we have always heard stories about these creatures, but never thought we'd actually meet one firsthand. We always heard stories about the Michigan Dogmen, but they were always stories from someone else who knew someone else that actually had the experience. It was never anyone I actually knew. Going forward, I hope this is my last experience with the creature.